we're seeing this right now in the world, as far as I'm concerned, with these, you know, these bigger agendas that are at play with control and oppression and tyranny. Everyone is doing the best that they can with their level of awareness. But just because someone's doing something today that you don't necessarily concur with, agree or like, it is nonetheless who they are today. And so to give them space to maybe evolve into something else or someone else that perhaps would be more favorable to you, but without you having to in any way make demands on them. When someone isn't wanting your advice or wanting your opinion, it is like someone coming in and rearranging your furniture. You'd be like, what are you doing? And so I come from this place of real patience with people that they don't want to suffer. They just don't know any other way. So yes, they have choice, but their choice is Maybe they get to choose out of 10 options, and I could have a choice of, say, 100 options. So if I can introduce them to five or six that they're oblivious to, that's the reframe. That's where they're like, oh, my God, I never looked at it like that. So it, it's, it, it is a nice distinction choice, but I think it's also it's got, it's a double-edged you know, sword, and we've got to be a little bit delicate, I think, because a kid down the street who's breaking a car window right now to steal someone's bag and purse, people say, well, he has a choice. He shouldn't be doing that. If you walked every step of that kid's life from the absence of a father because he was in jail and a mom who was a crack addict and his only sense of belonging was a gang and to be part of the gang, he had these initiations where he had to contribute and steal. You know, and, and that's what he's been taught. He was a baby at one point without all of that conditioning. He's not a bad person. He's just trying to survive. No different than a big executive right now at a corporate office who is, you know, pilfering cash or, you know, making sort of uh, deals that he knows are to the detriment of his shareholders, but he's going to fill his pockets. You know, you could say that's bad. It is. I wouldn't, I wouldn't condone it, but he's obviously doing it from a place of fear. Otherwise, he would be transparent and he would trust in the universe is abundant and he wouldn't have to lie. So everybody's doing these things, you know, from the major to the minor within the realm of their current awareness, and more importantly, within the realm of their understanding that we're supported by life. You don't have to lie. You don't have to cheat. You don't have to bring harm to anybody else. And we're seeing this right now in the world, as far as I'm concerned, with these, you know, these bigger agendas that are at play with control and oppression and tyranny. That's an old mindset that's based purely in fear and survival. And that's what I'm breaking for people. Mm, beautiful. It's so important that we remember that, that we remember everyone is doing the best that they can with their level of awareness. And you're right, if they knew better, they would probably do better. And that compassion and empathy and kindness is so important to ourselves and to others. And I remember when I first started on this journey, you know, I really wanted my parents to get on board and my siblings and I wanted to preach everything that I was learning and remembering from the rooftop. And it was causing a lot of friction in our relationship. And, you know, they were on their own journey and everyone is on their own journey. And I think what makes a really great teacher and a great leader is what you said, that that empathy, that compassion and that kindness and not, you know, rolling your eyes at where someone is at, but instead offering them one, two, three or four or five alternatives that they may never have realized were even possible before. I think that's that's our that's our job. That's that's what we're here to do. It's certainly my passion and my purpose is to help people look through new eyes. And um, but again, even that I only do when people ask. You know, I think there's a lot of um, superimposition that gets met with a lot of defense because unless somebody's actually asking for a contribution, then it's going to come across as quite often a form of um, you know judgment that you're telling people like there's something wrong with them, but that you know better. I mean, the audacity of that mindset to me is, um, is, is quite uh, unattractive. <laughs> yeah. I In might the... see a lot of things and I could certainly, you know, just by virtue of my deep sense of awareness and observation, I could point out things, but you know, it would be like running into your house right now and starting to move the furniture around. You'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> just because I might have a better sense of interior design, you don't want me to do that. But if you were to invite me over and say, oh my God, I love your taste. Would you give me some ideas? 
now you're opening the door, you're inviting me into your space and affording me the opportunity to contribute some different perspectives. So that's how I work. You know, it's like I allow people to invite me in. And uh, so far, it seems like a lot of people are inviting me in. So I got a, got a lot of homes to visit. <laughs> Beautiful. In the Vedic community, we say, wait for the worthy inquiry. And and that's, again, another aspect of a great teacher and a great leader is to wait for that worthy inquiry, not force it down people's throats and want them to try meditation or whatever it is. It's It's waiting for that. And that, for me, over my journey is definitely something that I have um, really try to embody more of, especially at the start, you want to share everything and you get so excited and you're like, you know, did you know this? And you've just got to, you know, wait for that inquiry because that is a great visual of like when someone isn't wanting your advice or wanting your opinion, it is like someone coming in and rearranging your furniture. You'd be like, what are you doing? So I, I want everyone to really take that, you know, take that on board um, everyone has an opinion about everything and everyone wants to give their opinion about everything. But unless it's asked, like zip your lips, like no one, no one's asking, wait for that worthy inquiry and then go, uh, go from there. You know, now with my, you know, with my family, like if they come to me and say, I would love, you know, your business advice or your meditation advice or your nutrition advice, I'm like, cool, let's go. But, you know, I don't force it down their throat like I used to when I first got started. And it's so much better for the relationship. Yeah, because that relationship then starts to become a relationship, right? Otherwise, it's a form of domination. It's not a relationship, right? It's a form of imposition, you know, demands that you're putting on somebody. That's not a relationship. It's got nothing to do with love. And again, this is why relationships are often, you know, one of the main topics that I help people with is because they recognize, wow, I'm not actually in a relationship with that person. I'm in a relationship with my idea of them. And then I'm trying to improve the idea of them, right? So, um, it's, it, it's, it's very subtle, but it's very profound. So what you just described in terms of your own evolution, which is beautiful, that you recognize and you can admit that you were trying to force people to do things or force your ideas on somebody, that's not that's dictatorship versus you letting them come to you when they're ready and accepting them for who they are. That's love and acceptance. And if people just get that distinction alone, it will completely transform their relationships, whether they be professional, personal, or romantic. It is the reflection of love that allows me to be who I am, but simultaneously extend that to somebody else and allow them to be who they are and where they are, knowing that we're all dynamic, you know, works in progress. So just because someone's doing something today that you don't necessarily concur with, agree or like, it is nonetheless who they are today. And so to give them space to maybe evolve into something else or someone else that perhaps would be more favorable to you, but without you having to in any way make demands on them. So you can be committed to someone's evolution without actually making them wrong for where they are. Mm, beautiful. That's key. 